as we work through and begin to identify into our gap analysis, we need to make sure that we are giving the right information. Remembering that the security strategy must have total senior management buy-in and acceptance. Uh, it must be intrinsically linked with the business objectives. The policies and standards themselves need to be complete and consistent. Uh, have we clearly assigned all roles and responsibilities throughout the organization? And as we've assigned those roles and responsibilities, do they have the appropriate authority to affect change within the environment? Some additional questions that we'd need to identify is whether our information assets have fully been identified and classified. What is the sensitivity level of the information and have we protected it accordingly? As well as are there full approvals by security? And not to mention that we document and have full approval by the information security management or at least the department for all change management processes. Next, let's talk about our approach to our document creation, starting with policy development. Uh, policies are the constitution of governance and standards. They're the law of the organizations. Uh, they're designed to capture the management statement of intent. Uh, they shouldn't be long and arduous to read. They must be uh, clear and concise and understandable. Uh, don't use a bunch of 10 cent words where a five cent word will work. And perhaps most importantly is to understand that our policies must be allowed to evolve. They cannot remain static because these policies and standards themselves are vital to the development of an articulate and actionable strategy. When we look at what is a good policy, what we look for in our policies is that we can directly trace them to their strategic elements that they were created for, uh, that they have a relationship to the overall security strategy. Too many organizations seem to write policy for policy's sake. Some of the positive attributes of a good policy is that it is articulate and well-defined, very unambiguous. Uh, each policy should state only one general security mandate. Uh, policies must be clear and easy to understand. Uh, policies should rarely be more than really a few sentences long. And really, there's rarely a reason to have more than a couple dozen policies as a whole. Next, let's deal with the standards. Uh, standards are a powerful security management tool. They're created generally by upper management and they identify our left-right boundaries. One way to look at these standards are they are the law of the Constitution. They also help us to provide a measuring stick for total compliance. As we've discussed before, it's important in, in many cases the law to have a good training and awareness program. The only way that our strategy is going to be effective is if everyone does their part and knows how to act and behave within our environment. Again, taking a sampling of most organizations, uh, the majority of personnel just aren't even aware of some of the security policies and standards that are in place. Uh, unfortunately, even today, many organizations just don't have a formal security policy, much less an overall strategy that guides them. So let's see if we can put it all together. Uh, when we look at our program, or at least the state in which our program is in, we now understand that implementing this strategy with actionable action plans will result in an information security program that has adequate robustness and well understood. Uh, the program is essentially the project plan to implement some of the other parts of the strategy. Again, it helps keep all of us on the same page. The objective of the information security program is to protect the interests of those relying on the information, not to mention the processes, systems, and communications that we all rely on to do our work every day. So how do we know when our objectives have been met? Well, the information is available and usable when required. Uh, information is observed by or disclosed to only those with an adequate need to know. Uh, information is protected against unauthorized modification, protecting against integrity. And business transactions, all business transactions, can in fact be trusted. 
understand that we don't collect data for data's sake. It all represents intrinsic knowledge to the organization. We need to understand the relative priority and significance, especially when it comes to the availability, confidentiality, integrity, authenticity, and non-repudiation, because it's going to vary according on the data itself. If we haven't adequately identified it and classified it, we have no idea how to protect it. Keeping in mind that we need to pay attention to the CIA for our physical systems as much as or even more sometimes than we do to our electronic or technology. Well, that does it for section one. It is a lot, I understand, and I'm throwing a lot at you very quickly, but I'm here to help all along the way. We're gonna get it done together. In our next section, we're gonna talk about information risk management and compliance. I'll see you there.